So when I was making my video about uh, Microsoft Azure Linux version 3, I mentioned how much RAM it occupied when it first booted up, about 115 uh, megabytes. And I pointed out that was quite good for a command line version of Linux. And that got me thinking, uh, what are the different RAM usages for Linux versions? Is there a star, a winner that says this is the most lightweight, the most resource friendly version of Linux, Linux distro? And then actually I thought about there are what? There are containers, there are command line versions of Linux, there's desktop versions, some use GNOME, some use KDE and so on and so on. So what I've done is I've had a bit of a Bit of research i've kind of installed whew, i've installed so many versions of linux looked at their uh, memory usage and i've got some answers for you so if you want to find out more please let me explain now before we get started i do want to mention i've tried quite a broad range of linux distributions for sure i probably haven't covered your favorite distribution whatever that may be please don't write in the comments why didn't you cover you know bubbly bubbly Linux distro. I looked at what was available. I looked at some of the common ones. I looked at what was good for testing between KDE and GNOME and so on. And there probably is some micro light version somewhere that uh, you know someone uses that I haven't tested that either. This is a general roundup. I hope you find it useful. Now part B to this is also I haven't tested Fedora at all. The reason for that is that Fedora feeds straight into Red Hat. Red Hat uses the Fedora community as basically free labor to do bug testing and things like that. And then Red Hat sell Red Hat Linux and then it doesn't publish the source code to the public. So I refuse to do any testing on Fedora. Okay, so the first category we're gonna look at very briefly is containers. Now, of course, containers are different to virtual machines, different to uh, kind of, you know, Linux running on uh, bare metal. They use far less resources, but it's still interesting to see which is the most efficient uh, version of uh, Linux for a container. Okay, so let's look at containers then. Of course, containers are very different to an actual virtual machine. They use a lot less resources, which of course is one of the main attractions. And here we can see uh, Ubuntu, Alpine, Alma, Linux, and uh, Debian. And uh, as you can see, very small amounts. So this is megabytes, 32 megabytes for uh, Ubuntu. Just three megabytes, which is crazy. I had to test this like five times. I was like, it can't be that low. But just three megabytes for uh, Alpine, 28 megabytes for Alma, and 17 megabytes for Debian. And so there we see that containers don't use very much. And if you want an absolute minimal amount, then you go with uh, Alpine Linux. Now with a container, you also get some RAM usage on the host, which is a surplus to this because obviously the whole container gets run and the, the infrastructure I saw maybe double or three times the amount reported inside of the container being used uh, on the host. That's not an exact number, but even so we're dealing with three megabytes or even uh, you know, 32 megabytes. I mean, I was able to run five or six containers and, you know, including their memory and any additional memory, just a, a few hundred megabytes was used in total. So definitely the way to go if you want very, very small amounts of memory being used. Okay, the next category is uh, command line versions of Linux that are primarily used for servers. If you have a remote server somewhere, you don't really want a desktop. You just want to be able to start and stop services, upload files uh, and so on. And so these are the command line versions. So here are the numbers for command line. Now, these numbers are for the download size. How much space does it take to download an ISO file? And, you know, there are smaller ones like Alpine Linux, 900 megabytes ish. 700 megabytes for Azure Linux, 1.7 gigabytes for the minimal Rocky 9.4 download, and uh, 2.5 gigabytes for Ubuntu server, 24.04. And then the tiny core, which I've thrown in here is, well, it's just 20, 20 megabytes, a tiny, tiny little, little distro. So here we can see that, uh, you know, if you're gonna use a lot of these, then what the distro size in, it may have a significant impact on what you're trying to do. It may be important to you. Now, when it comes to initial RAM usage, so you just boot up the system, uh, you don't do much else. You just ask it, uh, how much RAM is it using? Quite a bit of a difference here. You can see Alpine and Azure are kind of in that region of 100 uh, megabytes. 
Ubuntu Server 162 uh, megabyte, Rocky 9.4 288 megabytes. So really two or three times uh, what is needed by some of the other ones. And then Tiny Core is down there in 64 megabytes, which is uh, pretty impressive. So if you want a command line version for a server, let's say, running of Linux, then, you know, between 100 and 300 megabytes is going to have you covered. And so obviously you don't need much uh, for an actual PC to get that boot. Of course, running a uh, software on it, if you're running a web server and it's getting in, you know, a thousand requests uh, every uh, few minutes or whatever, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run whatever program you're on. So it's a different thing. But that's how much it needs for the initial boot up. And now finally, the desktop or workstation versions of Linux. Quite a range here, of course, in terms of who provides them, Ubuntu or uh, Mint Linux and so on and so on. And then, of course, so many different types of desktop, GNOME and uh, KDE and so on. So here's a look at quite a wide range. I hope it covers a range that is useful to look at. And let's see what we find out. Now, here are the download sizes for different desktop distributions, and there's quite a significant range here. So uh, Debian is 0.7. That's the net install because it does most of its installation over the network. Uh, K Ubuntu, 4 gigs. L Ubuntu, Lubuntu, 3 gigs. Mint, 2.7 gigs, 2 gigs. So you can see uh, 10.2 gigs here for, for Rocky. So there are various different sizes. The interesting ones are Puppy, which are uh, 700 megabytes, Q4OS, 800 megabytes, Rocky with just FXCE desktop, 1.7 gigabytes. So again, you know, do you know that does that have an impact on what one you're going to pick? Maybe, um, especially remembering that if you pick one like this, like Debian, then you're going to have a, uh, you know, you're going to have a lot of network traffic during the install. But it's interesting. This one uh, basically has everything on it. So you don't need to do anything really over the network. It's got every kind of package you might ever want there in that kind of uh, on that uh, ISO file. Now, here again is the initial RAM boot up to a desktop. So the desktop is up. The mouse is working. You can open a terminal. You can ask it how much RAM it's using. And uh, Debian, then, you know, a gigabyte. Kubuntu, 800 megabytes. Lubuntu. 464 megabytes. You can read all the numbers here. The interesting ones are again Puppy there, Q4 OS, quite low both of those. Rocky 9.4 using XFCE is pretty good at 624 megabytes and uh, so on. So you can see here the desktop system being used makes quite a difference. Uh, the GNOME ones seem to be using quite a lot of gig of, of RAM here. XFCE seems to be a bit better across those ones. L XQT seems to be quite low uh, and so on. So you just need to pick uh, one that will work for what you need, but uh, noting that the desktop will make a difference. However, even though those numbers are interesting, you can say, well, actually, I'm just going to use Q4OS because look at that. That's just, you know, a third of what some of the other ones are going to be using. What we do once you've got it booted up does make a difference. If you're just going to open a terminal and run a few commands in the terminal, then why even have a desktop? If you're going to start doing things like web browsing, well, you're going to see that the memory usage goes up. So it really is web browsers today that take up so much of this of the RAM. So uh, Debian, uh, one, one and a half gigs there. Uh, almost the same for Rocky. You know, over a gig now for uh, Kubuntu. Almost a gig for... Uh, Lubuntu and you know even these small ones like Puppy and Q4OS they shoot up quite a lot 700 megabytes here so you know this is one tab open just looking at Wikipedia so you know if you start opening two or three tabs and then you maybe open up you know VS Code and all that this usage is going to shoot up so while it's good to look for a a lightweight distro for maybe an older PC or whatever the situation you're going to be using it for, uh, be aware that, of course, it is the apps that you use that really are going to consume uh, the memory once you get going. So what can we say in summary? First of all, containers are, of course, the lightest command line only, but they are very, very light. Command line versions of Linux are less resource hungry, good for servers. Lightweight desktops like XFCE, AXQT, Trinity, and uh, JVM help significantly. 
but it's the applications like web browsing that really use the system resources. Okay, so that's it. There's my look at the memory usage of different uh, Linux distros, depending on whether you're using it in a container and a server uh, on the desktop. Do you have a particular favorite that uh, you find to be particularly lightweight and really helps uh, in terms of resource management? Love to hear your thoughts below. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.